Hello and welcome to our poster, Contextual Density Ratio for Language Model Biasing of Sequence-to-Sequence -sequence ASR System. I'm Jesus Andres Ferrer, and this is a work that I have developed together with Ariel Besano, Pumitan, and Paul Bosila within Nuance. End to end systems have been really adopted by the industry and the literature, but they complicate the integration with external language models. The external language models are typically used to leverage um, text only training data, and they are extremely helpful when we are recognizing uh, single tones or infrequent words and phrases. Many of those words and phrases are named entities such as contact list names or song names of places. In the literature, there has been several proposals or techniques to exploit these external language models in general, such as salafusion, cold function, density ratio, hat, or internal language model estimation, or internal language model training. Uh, for the case of um, name entity recognition, we know that the training data is not representative of the particular name entity distribution that we're going to see in deployment. And traditionally, class-based language models together with some kind of weight finish state processor have been used to bias and contextualize these langu the, the, the language models. There has been several proposals for the specific case of the end to end system, such as contextual recognition and what does do, share, contextual last, or even contextual solo fusion. In this work, we propose contextual density ratio, which is on top of the contextual solo fusion and density ratio. The contextual density ratio requires changes in two stages of the standard end to end system. During training, we close the certain NAM entities between tags to indicate the beginning of and the end of an entity. This is very similar to contextual solo fusion. At an inference time, the end to end system um, proposes the NAM entity tags as part of the beam encoding to indicate when uh, should we apply a density ratio approach to bias the MDT distribution. Standard end-to-end -end systems do not differentiate between name entity tokens and standard tokens and they simply score them all using the log posterior which has some embedded internal language model distribution. In this slide we can see how in this hypothesis there is a name entity Mozart and we can see wha that while the system is providing a posterior probability to the tokens of that name entity, it is still using this internal language model distribution which is biased towards the name entities that we have seen in the training data and that's what we want to prevent because we might have not seen Mozart during training. In both contextual solar fusion and contextual density ratio during training, what we do is we search for the transcription of the training utterances and we search for the name entities. And whenever we find a name entity, we enclose that name entity between tags of open and close name entity. Like in this example, where most of this name and we use the name tag, open tag, and close tag to segment that information. The end to end system then learns from the context when these uh, name entity tags are coming. In contrast to the standard end to end system, the contextual solution adds a biasing language model uh, distribution to um, approximate the name entity distribution that we expect to see in deployment. And this distribution is added together with the end to end distribution to bias the distributions towards the name entity distribution that we expect to see in deployment. So clearly, there is just two regions in the context of solar fusion. There is outside tax region where we just score the tokens using the log probability of the end to end system. And then there's the within regions sections where we just use the end to end the score and together with the biasing language model that we use to represent or estimate the name entity distribution that we expect to see in deployment. In the contextual density ratio, uh, on top of the solar fusion 
component, we add an internal language model component uh, that we intend to counterbalance the internal language model distribution that the end-to-end -end system has. Note that this internal language model representation has to update the context when it is outside the tags, but its score is only uh, added to the set of scores uh, within the, the region. So when we are within a name entity segment, we scored each of the tokens with three different components. The end-to-end -end, uh, system, the name entity language model to bias, the name entity distributions toward the distribution we spec to observe in deployment, and a third component, which is an internal language model representation to balance off or counter balance the internal language model distribution. As we have just highlighted, the main difference between the contextual density ratio and the solar fusion approach is that we subtract this internal language model estimation that we have for each of the name entity tokens to counteract this internal language model distribution that the end system has before adding the um, name entity language model solar fusion distribution. So finally, in the contextual density ratio approach, we have different regions similarly to the solar fusion approach where we just score with the end-to-end -end system whenever we are outside a name entity segment and whenever we are within a name entity segment, we apply the three previously mentioned scores, the end-to-end -end score, the solar fusion score and the internal language model score to subtract the internal language model component of the end-to-end -end system. We applied the contextual density ratio technique that we proposed in this work to an internal doctor-to-patient conversation task. The models that we used were trained in 1,500 hours of conversation, and we tested on 27 hours of conversation data that comes from several medical domains. We focus on the person names that occur in those conversations as the name entities to recognize and we automatically mark them in the training and test set by intersecting the transcriptions with a list of 173,000 English names. 5% of the utterances in the test set have names. We measure both the word rate and the word rate within tasks, that is the word rate on the names that we have in the reference. We use the same models that the LASA paper proposed, which in turn is based on the, uh, list, in the list in attendance spell paper. The models that we used were composed of six bidirectional STM encoder layers and two unidirectional LSTM decoder layers, summing up to a total of 144 million parameters. In order to approximate the internal language model, we train a similar architecture to that of the decoder of the end-to-end -end model, and we use the same word piece lexicon as the output of the language model, which comprises 2,500 tokens. And we train this model on the very same transcriptions that the end-to-end -end model was trained on. The biasing language models for the name entity distribution that we used are initialized using the internal language model parameters. And then we train on all the names uh, from a full conversation until the convergence. We train one biasing language model uh, per conversation, and then we combine all these scores, the solar fusion, the context density ratio, the end to end, that we have to combine using some interpolation ways that we tune on a different uh, adaptation task. Uh, we run several experiments, uh, real data laboratory experiments, and also experiments for uh, understanding how contextual ratio works. So in summary, what we have found is that the contextual density ratio improves 46.5% uh, relative with respect to the name entity recognition of an end-to-end -end baseline and 22.1% over the strong contextual solo fusion baseline uh, in the name's entity recognition. The contextual density ratio does not have any negative impact with respect to the baseline in terms of global water rate, and the contextual density ratio is shown to be robust against noise, certain amount of noise. So the details of this experimentation can be seen now. Here we see 
three, four rows, we have the standard end-to-end -end baseline, which obtains these word rates, and then we have the end-to-end -end with the contextual tags, without, but without any contextual biasing while decoding, and then we have the contextual solar fusion and the contextual density ratio. As we can see, the word rate is very similar, and it's actually within a noise variance of repetition of the experiments. And we can see that the word rate within tags, within the name tags, I mean the word rate only on the names, uh, it gets reduced from 44 down to 23% for the contextual density ratio. And we can also see that the precision on the recall get similarly improved. In addition to the real life experimentation, where we just have one biasing language model per conversation, uh, where we obtain this baseline uh, the contextual density ratio result from the previous slide. We also train this oracle setup where we just look at the references and we just train one language model per utilance that contains a name and then we just bias the utilance using the very same name that occurs in the utilance and as we can see here um, we get an improvement but it's not far away from the real life situation we also tried another um, adversary or difficult case where we just, instead of training one language model per conversation or one language model per utilance, the Oracle non-real life experiment, we also tried to just train a language model for the full test set, just merging all the names that we have in all the conversations from the test as a single biasing language model, and then we observe a degradation but this system is still better than the baseline. We also put the conditional density ratio robustness to the test by adding some random distracted names to the list of names for each conversation in a real life setup where we just build one biasing language model per conversation. As you can see here, contextual density ratio doesn't degrade the word rate within tags significantly as we introduce some random distracting and names like for 1, 2, 4, 16, 64, we don't see a large degradation. And we start to see some larger degradation with 256, but this word rate within tax is still uh, much better than the baseline uh, word rate within tax. So, contextual density ratio seems to be somewhat robust against random distracting names. Finally, we assess the performance of the proposed uh, contextual density ratio technique in an adversarial setup where we just selected 16 additional distracting names that we add to the list of names, and we selected these names from a pool of 170,000 names. The names were selected with a different graphical Levenstein's distance with respect to actual names from the conversation. And this distance varies or ranges from 1 to 4, 1 to 4. As part of the noise that we are introducing, or the random noise names that we are introducing, we can drop full words. So an adversarial example for German Smith, an adversarial name for German Smith can be Smith. So in the table we can see the word rate within tags. Uh, for the random case we see that we are we have obtained a relatively good uh, performance compared to the clean baseline. And then as we decrease the Levis's distance, we can see that we get a large degradation with respect to random noise. But this degradation is not that large, as one might expect. So in conclusion, we have proposed a new contextual density ratio estimation to bias in the entity distribution. We have run several experiments and observed large gains with respect to a strong end-to-end -end contextual baseline on name entities with without any degradation into the global system performance. We tested uh, this technique in several cases, including random selected, randomly selected distracted names and some of the other examples. So in general, we can see say that contextual density ratio is robust to certain amount of noise. As a future work, we want to improve the proposed technique in the adversarial scenarios. Thank you very much for listening and uh, watching this video. If you have any questions, I will be delighted to answer them into the virtual session. Once more, thank you very much for listening.